Hello. We've all entered Lent now, and the wee boxes are on the mantelpiece of the kitchen table, and at least some thought has been given to what we might forego as our Lenten penance. We do this, or at least we think about this every year. Something that most of us were unable to do this year was to receive our ashes on Ash Wednesday, because in Scotland at least, our churches will remain closed for a little longer to keep everyone safe. Someone said that the entire year had already been Lent. All of us will feel some sympathy with that. If we manage to see Ash Wednesday Mass online or follow the text in our missals, we might have noticed how the chosen gospel for the day, it was from St. Matthew, included Jesus's rather stern warnings and advice about not parading our good works for others to see. This year, at least as far as receiving the ashes in church went, we didn't have that option. Passers-by in the street and travellers in the bus didn't stare at our smudged foreheads. And even if we had been able to get to the church this year, we'd have had the ash sprinkled on our bowed heads rather than marked on our foreheads. In other times, in different circumstances, if anyone did ask about those marks on our foreheads, we've all seen them, we all remember them, we hope that we might be able to explain that it's not about showing how good and holy we are, but the opposite. It's to remind us that we know that we need to be more holy, we need to be better people, and that we want to use these signs to nudge us in that direction, not to show off. Jesus was, of course, identifying that temptation that in our times we sometimes call virtue signaling towards doing good things, but more because they might attract admiring glances and less because they are good. This year it will be slightly easier to avoid that particular trap. Anyway, here's the prayer from the Missal that would be said in any other year as the celebrant blessed the ashes before sprinkling them on our heads. O God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And that's from the Roman Missal. Now, here's a Lenten proposal that Skiaf will offer you this year. <clears throat> Each Sunday, starting today, on the first Sunday of Lent, there's going to be a wee reflection to support our journey towards Holy Week and Easter. We do this today, and we'll do so on the second and the third Sundays of Lent. Then, as is usual, on the fourth Sunday of Lent, which is Skiaf Sunday, we'll have a special celebration that will be led by one of the bishops of Scotland. And then we'll have one more of these reflections on the fifth Sunday of Lent. And by that time, we'll be looking forward towards Palm Sunday and Holy Week itself. But now, at the beginning of Lent, we are all looking ahead, hoping that we'll be able to be back in our churches, indeed for these solemn liturgies, recalling that it's almost a year since we saw Pope Francis in the media so powerfully praying for the whole world. Do you remember solitary in that dark and rain-soaked St. Peter's Square? It's always good to recall that Lent is not only about giving it up, which is probably what comes to mind immediately for most folk, be they people of faith or not. 
There is an essential Lenten triad that we must remember, fasting, but also prayer and almsgiving. We need all three. And in later reflections, we'll look a wee bit more closely at, that, at these three and what they might mean for us. We will see how these outer signs, even when done discreetly, as Jesus suggested, are entrenched in the inner movements of our hearts, of our souls. That's where the repentance that we often speak of needs to take place. Only then leading in turn to renewed outer actions. Faith in action. Our great tradition of Catholic social teaching guides us, itself rooted in the biblical tradition and in the life and teaching of Jesus. We're going to pray also this Lent for some people in particular, our friends in South Sudan, whom you support through Skiaf, Vaida, Shidala and Malia. We'll find out more about their situation and the lives they lead. And we'll pray also for the people there who walk with them. We do so because we are certain that Jesus walks with all who suffer, holding their hands and identifying completely with them. Will you join your hands to his, to theirs? Let's conclude then with this prayer from Skiaf. You can find it on the website, which you could also say now, but also at other moments over Lent, perhaps even every morning. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the beauty of your creation and for all the good things you graciously give us. We pray for more understanding of the differences between peoples and the recognition that we are all one in Christ. Thank you for making us all unique, but still all created in your image. Help us to look to Jesus as an example of someone who broke down barriers that excluded. Give us the strength and wisdom to work together and to bring about positive change for those who are suffering. God of compassion, hear our prayer. Amen. Have a pleasant and peaceful first Sunday of Lent.